Hey guys, it's Jo here from Oops -a Daisy, and today I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the Canva templates that are included within our new journal project kit range. So when you receive your journal project kit, you will receive a whole bunch of journaling goodies, but also a cheat sheet which gives you some top tips for how to use your new stationery, along with a QR code which will take you to this journal project kits homepage. So once you're here, you can scroll down. There's a little bit of information about the project kits and then you'll find the details of the range itself. At the moment, we've got three different kits available, but the plan is to bring out lots more of these. And underneath each project kit, you will find a link to shop the kit and also a link to the kit resources. So what we're going to look at today is the Dutch door pet lock spread, which is this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and click the kit resources button. And then you'll find that you're taken to a password page because this content is password protected and is only available to people that have purchased the kit. So I'm going to pop in the password here now. and click enter and with a little bit of luck that should open up the page there we go and once we're in the kit what you'll find is that we have a bunch of different options we've got step by step how to use the kit we've got our digital downloads we have video tutorials of how to use the kit and we have an inspiration gallery so just scrolling through here is a little gift that we made which shows all the contents of the kit we have a step by step guide to the different spreads that you'll create um, in text format if you'd rather watch it that way um, some photos so that's the cover page of the pet log dutch door and then going down into how to create the individual pet logs and what we're going to do today is figure out how do we size photos so that they are perfectly sized to go into these spaces that we've created in, in our pet log spread. And you could draw those pictures, you can doodle them in, you could do some guesswork and do some printing and hope. But what we've actually created is a Canva template that you can use free of charge because Canva has a free login um, and we can create the perfect size images for your spread. You'll see also in the digital download section, we have an area for downloading the, a digital copy of the cheat sheet. We have um, the grid scrapbook paper that's included. And this here is the Canva template. Before I click on that, I just wanted to quickly show you, this is the tutorial you're in at the moment, but there's also going to be a tutorial with me showing step-by-step -step how I created that journal spread in my journal. And we've got a gallery here, which is some pictures at the moment from our lovely creative team. But what we're hoping is that when you've used the kit, you will email us pictures yourself and we can upload them to the gallery and create a really lovely resource for future customers to see how everyone else has used the kit within their journal. So I'm going to go backwards up here. And I'm going to click to download the Canva template. So this doesn't involve you having to already have a login for Canva. You can quickly make a free login. I'm just going to accept those cookies. So it's going to say that a template has been shared with you and do you want to use it? So you will click use template for new design. And here it is going to ask for a login. If you don't already have a login, you can create one really easily. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to go continue with email. And then I'm going to pop in an email address that I haven't already used for Canva, which is our wholesale email address. And click continue. And then it's going to ask for your name. I'm just going to write my name. Um, and then it wants a code that it will have sent to your email address. So I'm going to quickly grab that code. And this is a completely free of charge Canva login. So 
I don't need to pay for anything. Pop the code in. And then it will take me through to my free account. So what you're seeing here is the Canva dashboard for the design. You've got the design in the center here, and then you've got the menus, the toolbar down the side here. I'm going to skip the tour. Um, and then I'll show you how we're going to add in images. So everything within this first page, which is some instructions that I've created for you, is all locked. So you won't be able to move anything or edit anything without unlocking that. And then if we scroll down the second page, this is where you will be sizing your images for printing. This is an A4 page. So once we've popped the images into these placeholders and print this off, these will be sized perfectly to fit inside your journal spread. So what we need to do is get the images into these little spaces. And how we do that is by coming over to our menu area and you'll see you've got a few different options down the side and we're going to go to uploads so once you're in uploads it's really about adding your images into canva so we're going to click on upload files and i will select within my window you can't actually see it on the recording, but it's basically opened up a window on my desktop. I'm selecting the images that I want to add in. So I've selected three images that are on my desktop, which is of Freckle, Elvis and Flora. And I'm clicking open and you'll see that those magically import into their Canva desktop. So now we've got the images all linked in here. How do we make them come over here? So this is where we need to unlock this square. So I'm going to want to add my first image into this square. When you click on it, you get the little padlock. Click on the padlock to unlock it. Now, technically, at this point, you can move it around and you can resize it, but I would advise against that. What we want to do is drop our image into that placeholder. So I'm going to go over to the left hand side. I'm going to left click on this picture of Elvis, hold the left hand button over and drag him over. You'll see, first of all, he'll go really big. And then if you keep going, so you're hovering over that square, keep holding that left hand button. Elvis is now in the building. Um, so he's now in that square. What you'll see is that it's actually resized the dimensions of that images and cropped it so that it's exactly this shape. And this is what we want. So regardless of what dimension your image is, it will turn it into the right dimensions to go into the space in our journal spread. What I'm not so happy about is that Elvis is quite small. He's not central to the space, but we can fix that. So what we're going to do is with that selected as it is now, I'm going to go up to edit photo, which is up the top here. Click on that. And then you've got a whole different bunch of options over here. You can do cool things like add filters to the pictures if you wanted to. But we're just going to crop it. So we click on crop. You can now see is a kind of ghost image behind. This is the original image. And then this is the frame that we were using. So if you click and hold, you can move it. So Elvis is a little bit more central. I can also drag down the image so he's a little bit bigger in the picture and move it. So basically move it around until you're happy with it. When you're happy with how it is, Elvis is nice and central. We click return and you've got a picture that is cropped to focus on your subject and it's the right dimensions for the space in the journal. So I'm going to do that again. Before I do that, I'm going to lock that image. So I'm not going to mess with it whilst I do the next one. So click on the space that you want to add the image in. Click the padlock to unlock. And then we'll go over here and we'll find Flora. So click and hold the left button. Keep holding it and drag her over until she falls into the space. And then again, if we go up to edit photo, click on that one and then over to crop. We can now crop Flora so her face is a little bit more central in the image. Beautiful, beautiful girl. 
And when you're happy with that, click enter and you'll hold that down. Just again, click this little three dots here for more options. And then you can lock that image in place because we're happy with that. And let's do the third one, which is freckle. So we're going to click on the image, the placeholder where we want to place that image, click on the padlock to unlock it, and then go over to the left hand menu, click with the left hand mouse button, hold the image, drag her over until she pops into the box. And she's fairly central, but I think we could probably do a better job. So what, with that selected, we're going to go edit photo, which is up here, which opens your edit photo window. And um, we're going to click crop. And I think, oh, what I've done there is change the shape of the box. So it's worth noting anytime I do anything that changes like this so if I accidentally you know mess with the image size and I'm like oh that's not right anymore you come up here you can undo and go back to where you're at so let's try that again I'm gonna go edit photo I'm gonna go crop I'm gonna move her over and what I was doing wrong there is when I was trying to drag this corner I had the corner that is the text box corner let's undo that selected so that's not what we want to do we want to select that section and there we go perfect click enter so anytime you're not happy with what you're doing click the undo button or Control Z or Command Z if you've got a Mac and it will take you back to where you were before. And then we're just going to lock that again. So now I've got my three images for my pet log spread inside here. And then it's the question of how do I then get that on the printer? Bear with me one second while I have a quick drink. <coughs> Excuse me. So. We're going to, first of all, rename the file. So this is where your file name is. And you can see that it's added copy of before the title that I have given the file. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to call it pet log images and click enter. So this is the name of the file now. And now we're going to download it as a PDF so that we can print it on our home printer or send it to a printer if you want to do that. So we go to share up in the top right corner. We go to download, which is here. And then we are going to change the format. We don't want a PNG. What we want is a PDF. And at the moment, we've got two pages. I don't want the first page in this spread because that's our instructions not really that important for me to print. So I'm just selecting the second page and saying done. And then when you hit download, it will download that file for you. And you can go ahead and print that at home um, on your home printer, or you can send it to a printer if you'd rather. Um, and once it's printed onto A4 paper, these will be the correct sizes for you to cut out and add into your journal spread. So this here is the pet log spread one. We have a different one for our best of the year. And the plan is as we increase the range of project kits, we will increase the, name, the range of these templates if they work for the kit that we are creating. And if you'd like to see us make these for other stencils, then pop a comment below. Um, again, if you've got any questions about how to use the Canva templates, again, do pop, pop a comment in the description and I do my best to get back to you. Um, but I think you'll find once you get into Canva, it's really intuitive, it's very easy to use and it's free. This isn't a paid um, video. Um, I've just used Canva for a long time for kind of simple graphics and find it very easy to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I hope it will be helpful for your journaling. So yeah. This is our Canva templates for our project kits and I will catch you again very, very soon. Take care.